Hey everybody and welcome back to the Rock Before Days show. I'm so glad that you can join me today. This is a brand new podcast we started not even a month ago and we are so excited that we can still bring valuable content to all our rugby fans out there. Today, Daniel the Cock, Dan the Man aka is joining me in this podcast or in this episode rather I should say. Daniel, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Just tired of this uh, lockdown. Wanted to see some rugby. Uh, actually, wanted to play rugby again. So everything's good. Just missing the sport, eh? Oh yes, I I completely agree with you. Every time the weekend comes around, I'm just waiting to see a team play. I'm like, okay, it's nine o'clock. Get ready. It's gonna be rugby or five o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, okay, who's who's playing? Nobody. Yeah. It really yeah. it's bad. So in this episode, we are so excited to talk about a bit, a bit about South African rugby. So Daniel, what do you think is, is the plans that Rossi Erasmus want to show in South Africa? What do you think is his plans for our future? So it seems that everything uh, Rossi touches turns to gold. Um, as we know with the Rugby World Cup, you know, he, he took over the coaching position and um, he just turned to gold and we won the cup. So obviously for those who've forgotten. Um, England, don't forget. Um, so, um, but he's he's currently the director of rugby, and um, that's quite an important role because he he will he will have the future of rugby, South African rugby, in his hands. And with all this talk of uh, South Africa might leaving the Super Rugby and you know joining the Pro 18 and or over the Pro 16 and or the Pro 14 and making it a new competition, Pro 18. I heard a rumor about that. Um, you know, there's there's certain things he has to look at, and Talent distribution is one of them. We'll get into that later. Um, but, you know, structure is going to be important and how he approaches the new season of what is South African rugby. Yes. No, I completely agree with you, Lance. Just just thinking a bit, uh, back to Rossi's important job as the South African head coach, where, which he took over a couple of years ago, and what he did with that team. I mean, that was tremendous, tremendous. I think Rossi really, really... Um, you will have a difficult job after this lockdown to get everything r- in, into the right order again. Uh, we, I did speak a bit about this with, with Jock in our second episode, so you can go check that out as well. We, we spoke a bit about the New Zealand Super Rugby competition, the Aotearoa. And again, I'm I'm really sorry if I'm butchering that name. I am a South African, so please don't don't give me too much slack about that. But we sp- we we spoke a bit about how New Zealand rugby will get up and running again. They'll get match fit again, and how South African rugby will struggle a bit. Now that's not just Russi's job to get our players up and running. He's not the coach of every team here in South Africa. And of course, he doesn't make the decisions alone. It's definitely a a, um, a group decision, if I can say it like that. But I think his, his duty as the director of SR Rugby will be challenged in the next couple of months, even maybe years to come. It will be a difficult job. Um, so that will be very interesting. But as we speak about South African, South African rugby, and in, in specifically, you mentioned this um, in our last discussion, just speaking about rugby, because that's what we do when we get together. What do you think about like the talent in South African rugby just before this lockdown? And how do you think it will be affected with this lockdown? Because we always see like good competitions during the year, definitely school rivals. I know you, you were in a school rival in your younger days. So let's speak a, a bit about that. What do you think is going to happen with our talent here in South Africa? Pending this lockdown. Yes, one of the most important feeders for South African rugby is definitely the Craven Week. Um, mm. Every year, uh, except this year now, it's massive. Um, you know, it, it gets together. Every every union puts a team out there and they play, or two teams out there, like big provinces like the Bulls, uh, Western Province or the Stormers. Um, even the Lions sends two teams, the Sharks sends two teams. So, you know, there's this massive... Uh, talent pool that that every every union can go and look at and pick a best player. But now that we don't have that, the next two years is maybe in jeopardy for what is to mm. come. Because we know we know there's under twenty world twenty World Cup that is important. Because if you don't have a good youth system, let's look at two thousand eleven when uh, the box won it. I think it's two thousand eleven. You know, uh, Stephen Kutzel, Peter Stephen Toy, Andre Pollard, Dylan Lights, all those players who are part of that team. 
and now they're successful internationally. So, you know, there's this, this is intense thing of converting your youth further. And without the craving we here, um, it's a massive gap in our, in our, in our, in like the NFL does. So the weakest union can pick big five players first or two players first and then every new union can pick as well. Um, or you'll have to incorporate the club system. So every every province has about six, seven clubs. Um, not speaking about the Bulls, but speaking about something like the Harlequins, Pretoria Club, uh, the Turks Rugby Club, not the Turkish University Club, the Police Club, Narco Bella, you know, every, it is this club system that we have that just, it's actually more for fun, but the first teams are still very competitive. So mm. you'll have, either have to take them and say, but you young players, go check a club out, go play for them for a couple of years and then draft them from there or pick a player from there because that's how it worked in the old days. Um, my gym instructor, um, Yanni Brooks, yeah. played for the Bulls way back then. And um, he said that he played a game on Wednesday uh, for Harlequins and then he'll wait for Friday to have the selection <laughs> to play Saturday for the Bulls. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. That's, okay, it's not the same anymore these days. But imagine that, that you can play on a Saturday one week for Harlequins, a club, normal club game, just having fun with your mates and then afterwards, the next week you play for the Bulls or you, the Lions select you or whatever. So there'll be systems in place that, that we have to check and have to monitor very carefully because there's a lot of talent lost in between the Craven Week because everybody looks at the Craven Week A, but never nobody looks at the Craven Week B side, the C side and the D side because every union yes. sends four teams in general and two A teams basically so it's something important to look at and something that is I think still untapped in South African rugby I agree with you then I think you you made valuable points which the 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 directors of South African rugby should look after you know the people in leadership roles here in South Africa I think uh, a problem with this whole lockdown and with talent being lost is players that had momentum through their own mm. school and university. Let's even go to university as well. Yeah. During those playing years, they got fit. They stayed in the gym. They stayed active. They were match fit as we spoke about, I think in our last discussion as well mm. about being match mm. fit. And I think that will, that will actually be lost in this time. Yeah. Um, maybe there will even be players not pursuing a career in rugby just because of this, which is going to be mm. sad. Just imagine we could have lost a, 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 a Cheslin Colby, for example, due to this thing because of a, a mentality state where they, where they decided or maybe their parents even decided, you know what, rugby can be, can be shut down <laughs> if there's a global pandemic. Yeah. Uh, which I'm not saying that's the case with everyone, but I think that will that will be seen in the next months to come, even years to come. We will see players that had a great chance. Let's let's take someone who's a bit older. Let's let's take a, a South African player that shook some some um, critics. I'm I'm thinking about like a Kerwin Bosch type of player. You know, someone who who came through the ranks in in Shark, Sharks rugby, if I'm not mistaken playing with the Sharks at the moment and uh, he, he really had critics on it, uh, you know, critiquing him. But even though he's still a young player uh, on the rise and he played so well during the last, I mean, I mean five or six matches before the whole pandemic uh, shut down rugby here in, in, in the Super Rugby competition. You know what? Maybe he can even come back and struggle to play again. You know, that's not why I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that's something that we need to look at. In sports, something can change in a moment. Now, now this moment is months. Mm. So this is going to be yeah. very interesting yeah. with, with our talent. Yeah, and I fully agree because um, the rumors are that the first rugby tournament in Africa will probably even take place in September. Um, I heard that the Bulls will probably start practicing within the next two weeks again. Um, other unions probably a bit quicker than that, one week uh, or even two weeks. Because we get news that Monday, uh, which will be the 1st of June then, um, that we our professional sports in South Africa may be allowed to practice again. So mm. with that said in place, you know, you have to disinfect and everything that goes around with the coronavirus at the moment. Um, but, you know, someone like Owen Bush, who, who played for the EP Kings, um, Craven Week, uh, went out of, sh out of school to the Sharks. Um, 
you know, definitely he's a, he's a per- perfect performance or perfect example for what the Craven Week was meant to do right. Because he played Varsity Cup, I think. Not a lot, but he played. Um, and then he, he it walked into the Shark squad and he's a professional player. He even played it for the box. So, you know, that, that, that's something that the Craven Week d- has done right. Um, and that's something we want to replicate without losing this year's talent pool. Because this year was a mm. pretty much pretty good talent pool as well. So you don't want to cap. Because imagine in, in 10 years' time, you look and there's nobody with the age of uh, 28 in the Pringle squad because one year, everybody just decided to don't stop playing rugby. Or, oh, wow. as you said, this can impact years. So imagine three years mm. of players not, not, not playing rugby anymore. Um, and some, be- some of them being 15 to 18 now, they haven't even fully developed uh, physically yet. So imagine the, the size and the impact. And the, so let's say there's a, there's, there's a shorter generation. And now you don't have locks because the people that were two meters didn't play rugby anymore. Simple example, but mm. it's an effect that we have to look at and control yes. and maintain. There has to be a reassurance that even though Craven Week hasn't happened or there won't be a draft or and there wasn't a contract uh, uh, available for people out of matric, you know, there's a club rugby system that's in place that they can go play it and they will develop from there and get drafted into unions. So there's always hope. Um, just hope it's managed right, but I, I believe Russ is the man for the job, and I back him fully. So, yes, I completely agree with you on that note, and I think I think Rossi will definitely shift things to to the the imagination of the older generation will struggle to adapt, but I think that is needed. That is the whole mm. point. It is definitely yeah. needed. But in any way, thank you so much, Daniel, for joining me for this episode. I love discussing these topics with you uh for those who are listening for the first time thank you so much for lending us your ears for this for this mm. time we we are three guys here at rugby for days that just loves talking about rugby different types of styles plays we like to critique and not to critique and stuff like that so if that is something that you're interested in and you're a diehard rugby fan please consider subscribing on our youtube channel and then also great news we are on spotify at the moment so if you can give us a follow and a like there as well that will be fantastic we are on all social media channels also so you can also go check them out for the one that is the best for you and then the last thing that we haven't done on this episode on on any podcast episode for that matter is a question of the day so i'm gonna catch you off guard at this moment and ask daniel to to post the question of the day and then that will be all from our side so daniel you have the last one let's go i also thought of something we didn't we didn't mention but i'm gonna use that as a question of the day did you know that you stand a chance of winning a jersey of your choice if you win a super brew pool of rugby for days that we mm-hmm. host on Super Brew. So um, with this new Super Rugby format of New Zealand, did you know that if you win the pool, you will be able to win a jersey of your choice? And that is only Super Rugby teams, of course. Um, I think we won't limit it to New Zealand teams only now because then only New Zealand uh, New Zealanders will take part or New Zealand fans will take part. We'll open it to the public as well for, for uh, South Africans, Argentinians, and then obviously Australian fans as well. So, um, did you know that you can win a jersey of your choice? I love that. Seamus plug. Awesome. Thank you so much for listening, and then we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Thanks for listening.